be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, welcoming you to another episode of Rabbit Trails, along with my friend and partner in crime, Max Marciano. Max, how you doing, brother? Peace. I am doing, I know, right? Uh, I'm doing a okay. Back hey. from a, a, a long trip on the road out teaching. Yes. So, yes. so glad to be home and in the office and uh, doing what we do. Yeah, it's been a really uh, challenging week for both of us. And, uh, you know, funny, we're recording this on Halloween Day. So oh, I'm sure everybody's getting ready to go trick or treating. And, uh, you know, we've already gotten our rules. You know, you can't have to be careful about the costume you choose. You don't want to offend people. So I guess I can't wear any sombreros tonight when, when they're trick or treating. Or I can't go as Jason because that will offend people that have mental issues. So uh, basically, I'm going to go as myself. I think that's the best thing to do. <laughs> but anyway, it's been a challenging week for me, too, brother. I know you've been on the road. You've been uh, working out there in salons. And uh, you've been in the front lines. And you've been facing several challenges and helping other people overcome those challenges. So kudos to you for that. My challenge Thank is you. more domestic, you know, sort of like uh, <clears throat> I had a refrigerator that blew out on me and it's my wife's refrigerator. Not that we have his and hers refrigerators, but my wife, because she's a chef, she has a special refrigerator and it blew out and I didn't need that to happen this week. And then, of mm -hmm. course, it's delayed. So we're still without a refrigerator. We have the one in the garage that we replaced with the new one. And then we have the little one out on our patio where we keep refreshments. And so those are the two refrigerators that are now holding all of the food in our household. And hopefully by Wednesday, uh, they'll get this thing repaired. But anyway, uh, I also had another challenge <laughs> during the week. <laughs> and that's why I'm excited that we're doing this episode of Rabbit Trails because you know, the other day, because <clears throat> I had a little bit of free time from jockeying my clients around all week and, you know, trying to move them so I could be here for repair people, um, I had an opportunity to subject myself to some online education. <laughs> and I found it rather challenging. <laughs> it was, um, to say the least, it was a little painful for me to, to deal with, but I, I did, I got through it. And that's why when I spoke to you today, before we set this program up, that I said, I have some things I want to talk about. And some of it is repetition. I mean, we've said that on this show before, but I think sometimes it needs clarification because there's so many voices out there in social media. And sometimes when those voices that have information or have content, but they're not putting it together in a, in a way that's actually, you know, that makes sense. It makes a real challenge. And I think that's what confuses hairdressers in our industry more than anything else. It's like, just tell me how it really works. Don't tell me some convoluted opinion or assumption of what you think is happening. So, Let's talk about formula for our volume for lift, which is a way of formulating, and the universal law of lift. Now, both of these are taught in our industry. And, and there's a difference between the two, right? Volume for lift, yep. which most new hairdressers in our industry were taught because that story changed with the with the um, the introduction of European hair colors in the North American market, <clears throat> teaches that the volume determines how much lightness will be created in the color form in the color process. So, ten volume, not no deposit, uh, no lift. That's what they say. Twenty volume, a little lift up to two levels. Thirty volume, three. Forty volume for four. And here's the reality is that that is kind of accurate, but it's not completely accurate. 
Okay. Because the volume of developer is totally dependent upon the level of color that you mix it with. Because the level right. of color provides the environment to allow the developer to release oxygen. So if I mix developer with a low, volume, low level of color, there's not a lot of alkalinity in that color. So it doesn't provide an environment where the, the developer can release, maximize its release of oxygen. Conversely, okay. if I mix it with a lighter level, it provides a huge window that allows even the lowest volume of developer to maximize its release of oxygen. So, so you can use that as a guide, but you have to consider what kind of result. It will give you a different result. Go. And, I know okay. you're ready. Go. So, I mean, I was just like, <laughs> part of the disconnect with what this particular person was doing too is she was showing a swatch of laboratory hair that we use in testing right. uh, with uh, when we work for manufacturers and we you know we get it ourselves just to do our own hair color experiments on and so she's got this you know uh medium brown half 50 percent white so it's a salt and pepper swatch right and and number number one that was probably not the best example that she could have been demonstrating on because yeah. we're, we're dealing with two heads of hair here. We're dealing right. with the pigmented hair and the non-pigmented hair. Right. And her whole sort of theory was that, you know, she was, a, she was an adherent of the um, universal law of lift. Right. So she was like, if I put a level seven and 20 volume on this swatch, it's not going to be a level seven. It's going to be a six. And that's only half true. Yes, the pigmented hair, based on the universal law of lift, if it truly was a five and you applied a level seven color with 20 volume, that pigmented hair would come to about a level six. But that well, non-pigmented hair would color to a level seven. Mm -hmm. So to just say like, that's kind of what, what was right. made, made yeah. me uncomfortable. It's like this blanket unilateral statement right. that it's not, gonna, it's not gonna be this. Well, no, it's like the color doesn't have a brain. The developer doesn't have a brain as we've established early or right. It did what it was going to do, but it, I, I'm just saying, like, if you're going to give visuals to people, you know, make it all level five hair and show that when you apply a seven to a level five with 20 volume, this is what happens. Right. Right. And here's the you thing, know, but too. It, it, it wasn't a, actually a level six. It was actually lighter than a level six. I mean, because in fact, you know, the thing is talking about levels like they're finite lines is right. really not a smart idea. The reason because is they're not they're not finite lines. Every level yeah. has three shades, basically. So there's a dark side of that level and a light side of that level. So if mm -hmm. I use a level seven on a level five, light brown head of hair, I won't be a six, but I won't be a seven either. You know, in the middle of a level seven, I'll be a level seven on the dark side, which, right. and the reason that this person was talking about it, they said, that's why manufacturers are lying to you. Manufacturers aren't lying to you. The reason they have you doing that is because they understand that the safest range for a non-accomplished colorist who wants to color hair is within two levels because within two levels you can't make too many mistakes. So if right. they keep you within that two level of range, two level range, it keeps that safety zone for them. Now, yeah, when you, you have go, the most control over your end result, exactly. And when you go to the universal law of lift, 
which if you've never heard of that, it's been around since time began. It is, in fact, how hair color works. <laughs> and it right. says that whatever, le whatever level of color that you use, and normally it's mixed with 20 volume, that is the standard in our industry, it will lighten the hair somewhere between, the, it says approximately half the distance between the level you begin on and the level of color that you're using. But even that is not accurate because the color doesn't have a brain. So based upon right. what's in the hair, if I, if I have a head of hair where they have a higher ratio of warm pigment than they do cool pigment, that's pheomelanin versus eumelanin, when they have a higher ratio of warm pigment, lightening that to that level, I may, I may be at that level, but I may not achieve that level because there's that granulated pigment is much harder for me to lighten. So I may end yeah. up short. I may end up short of the target that I wanted. And think about like, too, like what if the hair has a super coarse texture? You're going to lose a little bit more of that lightening ability. Right. Because just the sheer mass of the hair. So, so all of these blanket statements, like they're just, I mean, I hate to say, providing there, there are no absolutes in what we do. And like you taught me and was taught to you by your mentor, this yes. whole subject of hair color is the process of precise estimation. Exactly. We are estimating what is going to happen when we take this color and put it on this canvas we call the hair. Right. So, so just to take this earlier example a step further, what, what this educator was trying to teach is if you want this level five hair to be a level seven hair, you have to apply a level nine. And she's still swinging the swatch around. But again, her end result, like with that color applied to the swatch, the pigmented hair, she, she ended up with level nine plus gray. Right. It wasn't there was level nine. Because and, there's not enough pigment. As you get lighter, you sacrifice the amount of pigment. Right. So she didn't have enough good guys to beat up the bad guys. So yes, yeah. you may have got the pigmented hair to a level seven in your mind, but the gray hair, still gray. Right. And the, the whole point is, is that it, it's probably that 50% pigmented, 50% white sort of canvas is probably one of the trickiest to work on because it it's one of those things where you have to pick your battle. What's more important? If you're lightening the hair, do you want more control of warm or do you want more coverage of white because right. we know that white hair needs additional warmth in order for it to cover and not look flat or you know ugly exactly let's just exactly. Let's be real so it, it's very hard to do both of those things in one step and not just have uh less than attractive end result. Right. You're going to have to sacrifice one way or the other, or more, more than more often than not, it's going to have to be a two process color. Yes. If you want to get yes. one monochromatic tone throughout the entire section of head. So a couple of things, content uh, pieces were there, but they weren't, yeah, but they weren't in, in order. Oh. And then of course you pick the most, challenging section of hair to tell the story about right and, and it, as a it, as a result of that i mean anybody who's watching it can see that there's no coverage on this right where and then and then it creates like a disconnect right for the yes. for the information it, right it's more and listen i applaud this person for putting themselves out there and Absolutely. like we said, a lot, a lot of what she said was right. It's just sort of the context in which the information is delivered. We would have 
possibly picked a different way to deliver it. Okay. Right. Right. So, and, and, and another thing that was shared was the fact that ash colors leave the hair first. And I want to be very clear on this for people who have heard this and for people who believe this. <laughs> the reason, and again, we talked about this being the, the science of precise estimation. It's also the science of assumption. Mm -hmm. So many times what people are sharing with you is not definite, definitely scientific substantiated, but it's their assumption. So if I take hair that is warm and I color it with a color that is cool, I have taken a one color and I used a contrasting color to color it. So I, I've, these, they live on two different sides of the color wheel, if you will. As the hair begins to fade, which all colored hair does, if I have contrasting colors, am I going to notice the fading quicker, not because the color is leaving faster, but because I see the contrast more sooner? So see that whole story about <clears throat> Ash leaving there first, or we've heard that uh, light blondes, they reject Ash and they accept warmth. No, it's hair. It does not know. <clears throat> right. It's our vision, which is a part of physics of color. And if you if we don't understand how vision and light play a part in coloring hair, we're missing a piece of the puzzle that will confuse right. us. It, it, you know, could you color hair without understanding the physics? Sure, people have done it for years. But does understanding the physics of color help us understand the why? Remember, that's one thing that we try to strive. That is our mission, is to help you understand the why. Because if you understand the why, then you can, you can, you can take on that challenge and you can create yeah. the results that you're looking for. So I, that, I just, Max, it's just like, it's like fingernails on a chalkboard <clears throat> when I hear somebody say things like that that are actually not, they're not accurate. And yeah, I have something I, to do with something else. I can totally, I can totally understand that and and empathize with you on that. And you know, Dennis, you've been doing this for a long time, so you, I have. You've I've heard run it the all. gamut. <laughs> yeah, like like know. blue leaves the hair first. <laughs> blue right. doesn't know that it has to leave first. Blue's not in the hair by itself. Blue, blue doesn't know that involved. it. it that it has to go first, you know? I can see the yeah. little dye molecules lining up. I'm blue, I go first, red comes second, yellow comes last. That's not the way it works. And it just, sometimes we break the education into information. We break it down into information that again is based on assumption. See, you know, Max, if I had, if, if I had my dream class in hair color in beauty school, I would have taught, <laughs> I would have said, I'm gonna teach you a little biology. I'm gonna teach you a little bit of physics. <laughs> I'm gonna teach you some chemistry. I'm gonna teach you some geometry. <laughs> yes. You know, all of those things. Because, you know, it's the same thing when you hear someone saying, well, you know, 30 volume and 40 volume are going to give you a you know, it's going to lift you lighter. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't. It Whatever color you mix those varied volumes with, it just simply makes your result brighter. And it doesn't right. make it, doesn't make it bad. You know, no, if, if that's what you're going for. Right. You know. See, sometimes it, it, we have to, we would think we have to choose between good and bad. Either I do it this right. way or it's bad. And it's not bad. It all depends on what you're trying to create. You know, yeah. yesterday I had a coaching session with one of our students from Pinnacle. So <clears throat> last time we were together, we did color correction. So he went home and he tested out adding the clear to his darker formulas and moving them up and down the chart. And he tested mm -hmm. all this. And yesterday he was so proud. 
he had created so many, and this was a brand new color line that he had just switched out. He had switched, he was switching from what he was using to a brand new color line who knew nothing about, but he did the die outs. And then on his swatches, he dyed out these very formulas and he made some of the most beautiful colors. And I said, I am so proud of you. Those are beautiful colors. He goes, I know. And the manufacturer didn't make them. I did. That's awesome. You know, that, 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 that feeling of ownership and of power being empowered that you can make a color do things that no one would ever think of. I mean, yeah. he's, you know, he, he was very proud of that. And, and I think that's the goal. If we can help people understand you know, I, I spend more of my time and you spend more of your time trying to um, remove what they've learned and teach them what they need to know only because yeah. it's, it's just part of what's out there. And we, we assume if it's, you know, if it's an assumption, you know, someone says it, I always looked at, well, who taught you that? Right. Well, where did you learn that? Because... Well, I mean these things, these sort of myths that are in the, the hair color industry, right? They're all over the place. I mean, we just wrapped up our last uh, class of our inaugural sort of edition of what we call hair color school, you guys, which was yes. basically a, a four week intensive hair color immersion program and just like Dennis said, you know, when he was describing his perfect hair color class, you know, a little bit of biology, meaning hair structure, a little bit of chemistry, which was hair color chemistry, a little bit of physics, which was, you know, the science of light and vision and also hair color theory, right. and then geometry and mathematics with how you actually can create these mapping equations to figure out your hair color formulas for predictable results. And just the feedback that we've gotten from the students as far as like what they had to unlearn before they learned. Right. And, and the level of, you know, complexity that these, these things sort of complicated the entire subject to them. And then we are here trying to strip it down and then translate it into something that is bite-sized and process processable, if that's the word. Um, you know, it was just really amazing to me. And it, it was so nice to see the light bulb go off for these guys so many times. Yes. You know, it wasn't just like, like a one and done thing. Everything built onto the next. And now these guys, these 10 people, and that's all we ever offer uh, the number of seats in a session of Hair Color School is to 10 people for those four weeks. They are so empowered now. And that is such a special feeling for you know us as mentors and educators. And I mean, I mean, I could go on and on, but yeah, no, as a trainer, well, that's what we live for. Yeah. 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 As a trainer, that's so, what we live for. So, and, and we're very excited because, because of the response that they have given us, um, it has already increased the demand for our winter session where we're already half sold out for the winter session. It doesn't yeah. even start till January. And um, as we go back and reflect upon it and debrief, and the great thing about this program is you get three coaches. It's not just one person blathering on. You have three coaches right. to, to help you during the program and also to be in contact with you. I mean, we have a special messaging thread, which they don't want to get rid mm -hmm. of, by the way. Uh, they were posting oh, this know. morning. Do we really have to give this up? <laughs> But we, uh, but we place them in a special forum on Facebook for only for Hair Color School alumni. And, of course, in that group, once you're in that group, it's a closed group. Uh, once you're yeah. in that group, then we have another set of coaches who join us in that group. And, and they help to advise and coach 
answer questions, do little videos and post them there in that forum. So, so even though their month is over, they're still connected to us at Guru Nation right. so that they still have you know, time to digest and apply all of the content that they have been, that's been shared with them over the period of time. So uh, if you're interested in that program, it's called Hair Color School Winter Session. It is currently on our, on our website, www.gurunation.net. Uh, so just go to the educational catalog, scroll down, and you will find Hair Color School Winter Session. Now, some people don't know about cookies and cash. So if you have not cleaned your cash, cleared your cash, or if you have not cleared your cookies and you're trying to access, most, most of the time it's from a mobile device that that problem occurs, uh, I, we made it very simple for you. You can go into my uh, Instagram account and you, I have the link, a special link right there in my bio. And all you have to simply do is click on that link. It will take you immediately to the um, educational catalog. So you don't even have to worry about clearing your cash or doing any of that. Just click on the link and go for it. Make it happen. Dennis, can you put, put the direct link below us in the um, description box? I can, I can. Where I will, can uh, copy it and paste it into their browser. Yeah, I will, uh, I will place that below us. Uh, it will come up shortly. <laughs> So, uh, so Max, I think that, uh, I don't know how long we've been on today, but that really is, is there anything else we want to talk about? I mean, I know we want to talk about what's happening in November and December, but anything else that, uh, you know, I, I've got my little, uh, my little release out of the way and, yeah. and hopefully, hopefully we've made some, uh, some points for you that you and some of you, this is probably repetitious, but, you know, repetition is the mother of learning. Uh, I know, mm -hmm. so I, I think I, last time we were on an episode, somebody said, well, I've watched all your rabbit trails and I want to sign up for one of your classes, but I'm afraid I'll be learning what I've already learned. And I wanted to go, well, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, sometimes we have to hear something over and over and over again before it even yeah. registers, sometimes we have to hear it in different ways. That's why we have three coaches on our program so that you can um, hear it explained in three different ways or three different approaches yeah. to it. And, and I think that that's been really beneficial. It has, we found that, I think I shared that with you earlier that, you know, yeah. something that yeah. I shared during the color theory class that I thought everybody, I, so this is simple. They get this. And then one of our attendees said, I'm still not grasping it. And so Yvette, uh, Yvette Fontani, Yvette went ahead and explained it in the messaging group in her, in a way that was different from what I did. And the attendee actually understood it. So sometimes when you think that people understand you, they may not. So that's the reason. And we also have three coaches because we want you to have that individual attention. And um, yeah. we keep adding to the people that are becoming part of what we're doing at Guru Nation. And it really is, it's heartwarming to see that we have people who want to be part of what we're doing, uh, part of a movement to help you discover your own personal genius and hopefully clarify, give you a clear pathway for success in hair color. I think everyone has a bit of the story, but sometimes they may not have the whole story. And those are the pieces sometimes that are essential. And you don't realize how essential they are until you get caught. And you get caught in a spot and you go, oh my God, I wish I would have known that part of it before. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, Rather than have you scramble for the pieces, we're trying to give you all those pieces so that you yeah. can have success with hair color. Max, anything you want to share before we uh, close off today? Oh, wait, we're we're doing some new stuff, video stuff. True. I cannot ready. wait. 
next episode of Rabbit Trails, we're going to be uh, incorporating some, we, we've upgraded to some things that I think you're really going to help us uh, in our program here. So I can't wait, dude. I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> but we it's have to go to school. make it <laughs> even more impactful. I mean, but exactly. that's the thing. We are also all, I guess we'll close with this to you guys. You know, we're not here to say, oh, you know, we're the experts. We know everything about teaching hair color. We are also always continuing to, you know, update our skill sets right. and, and learn things that uh, we, you know, didn't know. I mean, without getting into crazy details, Dennis and I learned something in, in swatching out a particular product line that was we really did. like uh what's the word dumbfounding it was like crazy right anyway but now we can also take this back and export it into our training with you guys and that's exactly again that's what it's about like you know we are lifelong learners our our audience is lifelong learners and that's that's the beauty of what we do, you know, yep. always evolving and, you know, always growing. So absolutely you taking a class. Yeah. Come join us. But, and you know what, yeah. Max, I, we talk about this all the time. Every time we do a class, we learn. When, when we yeah. debrief with each other, we go, wow. You know, I, I figure that's a better way to say it. Or this, this was work. Or I didn't figure that out. Or, you know, maybe, I learned something from, sometimes we learn from the people who attend our program because they share their perception and we kind of go, well, that makes really good sense. That's a great yeah, way to yeah. talk about it. So we want to do yeah, that. Never. Um, so let's do a little commercial here. <laughs> We've been commercializing. Uh, we yeah. have our last set of classes for 2021. They are up on our website and um, we have lots of great classes coming up. Um, we have a deleted program coming up December 6th. So because people have asked, <clears throat> you know, they want to attend and that's dealing with direct dyes. That's coming up on December 6th. And I think the week after that, we have a code breaker program, which is a color correction program. And uh, it is a full, I think it's a full five hour program. So it'll be a full day. Yeah. And um then we also have, what else do we have? We have Principles of Color coming Principles. up this month. Yeah, it's coming yeah. up this month. Uh, but you can find them all on our educational catalog and it'll give you a great opportunity. We are also adding new videos to our website. Uh, you'll probably see those posted after the first of the year. We have some new team members that are gonna be putting together some videos that you can download, 45 minute overviews of a subject. And then we're going to have some new virtual classrooms added next year. So we're very excited about that. Plus, we are putting together dates for live classes. You know, a lot of people said, well, I like virtual, but I really want to go somewhere to learn. And, and so we're going to be putting those together and we'll have those posted as soon as we choose the dates and the locations. Max, something you want to say before I... Uh, uh, let's not forget our, our complimentary year-end 90-minute yes. session. Yes, December 20th, we are doing our year-end wrap-up. And we have several people who are coming in to do some special appearances on that program for us. Uh, it's going to be great fun. It is complimentary. You say, well, how do I get to go there? Easy. Send an email to dgebhardt at gurunation.net. That is D as in David, Gebhardt, okay, at gurunation.net. And just say, I want to be part of the year-end wrap-up. Um, <clears throat> we will then send you a link where you can log on and you can register for the program. You have to register. Uh, we only have 100 spaces available and we already are approaching halfway total registration so we have a huge amount of people that are turning out for that uh it's a three-hour program it will be three hours that are very worthwhile uh and it's for free 
And the reason yeah, we do that for free at the end of the year is to, first of all, thank all of those people who have supported us, all the people who have attended our educational events throughout the year, and to let you know that uh, we really do value your trust in us as an educational resource for you and for your success. So with that, oh, oh Max, I hear the chopper. I hear it. I all hear the right. chopper. I will see you in the clearing, my friend. And to everybody else, thank you well. all so much for being part of this today and for viewing us, whether you're viewing us here on YouTube. We appreciate that. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're trying to boost our viewership so that we can grow it here. We also invite you to follow us on Instagram. You can find Max at Max M Hair. You can find me at Real Captain Color. And again, our website, www.guruNation.net. <clears throat> we thank you all very much. We wish you a happy Halloween. And uh, have a great weekend. Have a great week. We'll see you on the next episode. So until then, from my heart to yours, I am Captain Color. I am out. Max, how about you, brother? I'll see you guys later. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye.